Well, that was the official announcement of the session. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Charpoo's Dev House and kudos to being like first day of GDC in San Francisco. You came to the Dev House early in the afternoon. Yes, thank you. Welcome. I'm Megan, I work with Charpoo's. I will be here all week. We're super excited. We have so many sessions this week, one every day, two on Wednesday. So check out the calendar, there's flyers around. Uh, and if you have any questions, there's a lot of chart boosters around as well. So it is my pleasure to introduce Nate, who is our Director of Developer Relations for the Americas. And he's going to dig into rewarded video. This is a super good presentation. It really gets into some of the, the details about placements and best practices. So let's welcome Nate. Woo! Thanks, Megan. Uh, thanks, everyone, for showing up as well. Like Megan said, it's uh, early in the week here on Monday, so I wasn't really sure how many people to expect, but uh, we got a good turnout, more than, more than I expected. So thank you for show, showing up. Um, I'll be happy to chat with anyone after the presentation as well. If you have you know, detailed questions you don't want to ask in front of the whole group, just come find me. I'll be hanging out here for a couple hours afterwards. So um, yeah, let's jump into it. Thanks for the intro, Megan. Um, like Megan mentioned, I'm going to cover how to make the most of rewarded video. Um, some best practices and best locations. I think at this point, we're somewhat all familiar with rewarded video in our games, hopefully, but I think that it's not done in the best form by a lot of folks at this stage. A lot of people might just kind of shoehorn placements in there. So I just wanted to talk about some general best practices, five of those that hopefully everyone can use, and then 10 locations that or placements that you can put in your game that um, you know may or may not make sense for your game, which is one point I'm going to get to as well. But hopefully this gets you thinking and um, you know, maybe you can come up with some more creative ideas you have for, that work specifically for your game as well. Um, so first of all, who am I? My name is Nate Dykstra. I am the Director of the Deve Developer Relations here at Chartboost for the Americas region. Um, thank you. I have six years in mobile game monetization and user acquisition experience um, on the tools and vendor side of things over the last six years. And then before that, I was actually a mobile game producer for four years, all at uh, THQ. Rest in peace, if anybody's familiar. So. Um, I actually pr was producing mobile games back um, in the feature phone days, even before the app stores opened up, and have then since moved to obviously um, smartphone games and so forth with the app store. So been in mobile quite a while. Before that, I was actually doing ringtones and wallpapers and content delivery on mobile. So um, I'm also a very avid mobile gamer, um, a, a gamer in general, but I spend more time, um, the time that I do have on mobile games, since that's sort of the focus I have in my career right now. It's where I spend a lot of my free time as well. So. Again, if you want to learn more about me, I'm, I'll be around afterwards. So let's jump into it. So um, why rewarded video? Um, just kind of highlighting some points here. Again, I think most of us are familiar with rewarded video at this stage. Uh, but if not, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here to explain it a little bit more to you. So nearly all top developers are using rewarded video. Um, it's an excellent user experience. The players seem to love it. Um, I've talked to many developers actually who don't include rewarded video or had it and took it out of their game that then received a lot of negative comments from their player base that, hey, I want rewarded video or, hey, I need a way to earn currency or earn something in your game rather than spending money. So players love it. Um, two of the points why players love it so much is it's opt-in for them. Um, it's less intrusive than some other ad formats, obviously. Usually there's a button for a player to watch to earn coins to double something, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more. And then there's a true value exchange with the player. The player is giving you, you know, 15 to 30 seconds of their time to watch an ad, and you, in return, give them some sort of reward uh, for doing so. Um, so I think that's the main point of why rewarded video is players love it, and that should be your ultimate goal in every game is to uh, engage and please your players. Um, the other thing from the developer standpoint is great monetization. Obviously, we all need to make money in our free-to-play games, um, and rewarded video has proven to be one of the top performers for that for publishers. Uh, high ECPMs, high fill rates. Um, we're seeing more branded demand come into video now as well, which is paying higher. Um, and also non-competitive ads there for you. So, um, And then the last piece I wanted to talk about here, which is kind of what I'm going to get into in my presentation, is fine-tuning placements and rewards in your game will maximize player fun, player engagement, and ultimately conversion on the rewarded video ads. Um, so. That's uh, the gist of what we're going to cover here. Now I'll jump into five key best practices that I'd like to talk about. And these aren't necessarily the placements yet. These are just general best practices to consider um, when you're thinking about rewarded video and putting it in your game. First of all, every game is very unique. I think um, a lot of folks, uh, 
I, basically, you, you'll just need to think about your game and how it's going to work in the in the context of your game. I'm going to jump into the 10 locations after the fact, but all of those may not work for your game. Um, as you know, you know your game best. Think about your game and think about the best way to implement those into your game. Similarly, focus on the core loop of your game. I think we're all familiar as game developers with uh, a compulsion loop or a core loop of our game. Player plays the game. Player achieves a goal. Player is awarded content or currency. Player continues to play with the new content or using the currency, and that cycle continues. If there's some way that you can think about building a rewarded video placement into this core loop, that's obviously going to perform the best for your game. So think about your, think about your loop as you're thinking about where to put rewarded video in. Uh, another great practice is guide your players to watch the rewarded video as you guide them through the tutorial process of the game. Uh, obviously, they're learning how to you play your game now. If you build that piece into a tutorial and show them that they're going to be able to earn currency or earn certain rewards by interacting with video, you're going to have a longer and better conversion cycle for that player through rewarded video. So remember to teach them this as you're teaching them the rest of your steps of your tutorial and through your gameplay. The third piece is don't be too generous with your rewards. Um, specifically, if you're rewarding currency in the game, uh, you could throw off the balance of your game economy quite easily if you're rewarding too much uh, soft or hard currency. So keep that in mind. Um, on the flip side, you don't want to be you don't want to be not generous enough because players may not interact with the video at all. Then there needs to be a true value for them to spend their time to watch the video. But again, not too much. You need to find that balance, just like you do when you're balancing your general game economy as well. And the fifth and final point I have here for best practice is just a variety of meaningful rewards. Um, so you want to offer more than just currency. You want to offer more than just reducing a timer. Um, you want to offer a lot of rewards for the player, but also very meaningful rewards, things that they're going to want to get in the game and that help them progress through gameplay. So remember that as well. Uh, next up, I'm going to jump into 10 effective locations here. And again, I want to preface this with that some of these will not work with every game. These are just some generic ones. Some you'll be very familiar with. Uh, some we've probably all seen. And then a couple ideas that I have that I actually haven't seen used in games yet that maybe someone can take away and implement. And So first and foremost, we have the in-game store. I think this is the rewarded video placement that nearly everyone has, you know, was first, in or was first introduced to. Um, Reward is usually a hard or soft currency of your game. You're in the store menu where someone can make an in-app purchase to buy this currency or buy uh, or to buy hard or soft currency. Um, so put a placement in there that has a button for them to watch, to click and earn currency as well. This is what I was talking about as well before. I think you need to make sure that you're not being too overly generous or um, not generous enough with the rewards to make it worthwhile for the player to watch the video. Um, this will help players who uh, with player monetization, those who navigate to the store but really have never any intention of spending, um, if, if they see it here, this is a good way to monetize that player um, who may never spend the 99 cents. Um, one negative to this, and I'll jump to this in the next slide a little bit as well, is it's a bit hidden. Um, so some players who never intend to spend will never actually navigate into the store. They may know that, oh, this store is just the, where I'm going to have to spend money. They may never nav navigate in there, so you may lose the opportunity to monetize that player if this would be your only placement. The next one, uh, kind of pivoting off what I said there, is putting it on the main menu or the home screen right in front of where the user spends a lot of their time. Um, this, again, could be rewarded. Uh, the reward could be hard or soft currency. It's a high visibility location. Um, as I mentioned on the last slide, some spenders, some non-spenders may never actually navigate into your store. So put a button on the main screen that's going to reward them currency for watching video. Uh, again, it's a highly um, it, it's a highly engaged placement. Um, players will probably click it a lot, and uh, you'll be able to get them there rather than in the store. The third placement I wanted to highlight is the daily rewarded multiplier. So, as most of you know, most free-to-play games offer a daily reward for coming back in every day. Um, if you offer the player the option to double that reward or triple that reward, whatever multiplier you may want. Um, they're likely going to do that. Um, the example I have here is from FarmAway. When you come back into the game, you can watch the daily double to earn while earn all the currency that you to double all the currency that you earned while you were away. Again, this is a very high engagement location. I think a, who's going to turn down the option to spend 15 to 30 seconds to watch a video to to double your earnings? Um, I don't think very many players will do that, and this will lead to again very happy players and more currency in the game. The fourth 
placement is 11 or Michelin complete multiplier, similar to the last one. Often when completing a mission, uh, players are rewarded handsomely with currency or items, whatever it may be. Offer the players an option to double that reward uh, by watching a video. Another high engagement location, and again, very pleasing to players. The fifth location I have mentioned here is a level fail or retry. Some people call it a revive or a save me location. Um, no players really like to fail or die in a level or mission. So give them another chance to retry from that same spot by watching a video. I think a lot of us have seen this location in endless runner games where you can continue your run by watching a video after you've died the first time. There's many other games where this placement would work well as also. Um, and yet again, another very high engagement location. Um, everyone wants to continue. So again, very happy players. The sixth placement is out of energy. Um, many games have an energy mechanic, as I'm sure we're all aware. Uh, energy is required to take certain actions in the game or complete certain tasks. Uh, usually games will have, you know, five to ten pieces of energy that you can use before it empties and you have to wait for that to refill. So when energy is depleted, offer the player an option to watch a video for more energy. Um, this will lead the player to stay in your game longer, uh, leading to higher engagement and uh, lower the player frustration of having to wait for timers and things like that. So, Similarly, uh, my seventh location is decrease the wait time. Um, most free-to-play games involve a lot of waiting for timers. I think we're all uh, aware of that, whether it's building something, whether it's waiting for more energy, whether it's uh, opening a, a chest like I have in the example from Hill Climb Racing 2 here. Um, usually players can spend their hard currency that they've earned or purchased to speed up those timers. But it's also a good idea to offer a player an option to watch a video here. Again, this is a great placement from Hill Climb Racing 2, where you can see I'm going to have to wait almost three hours to open this treasure chest. Uh, otherwise, I can spend 12 of my hard currency, which is gems in this game, or I can watch a video to do it right now. Um, this is going to keep the player in the game for longer periods of time. Maybe you need coins or some item that is locked away in that chest. And if you get it now, instead of waiting three hours, you're going to decrease the player's frustration and they're going to stick around in your game a little bit longer. The eighth one is uh, the return to game multiplier. And every free to play game, a lot of free to play games like idle games, like I have Charming Keep from Mighty Games Group here. In every free to play game, um, current, you can earn currency and goods while you're away, specifically in idle games like I talked about, where earnings goes on in the background while you're not playing. When a player returns to the game, you can make them an offer to watch a video to, to double those earnings while they were away. You can see on this example, again, from Charming Keep, you could also spend one gym or watch a video. Um, but this helps bring players back into the game more frequently, knowing that they're going to be able to double their earnings while they were away. And again, happy and engaged players. These last two that I wanted to highlight are ones that I actually haven't really seen too much in the wild yet, so I don't have a screenshot example, but these are ones I think that could be used effectively. Um, so every player likes to learn in-game strategies and tips for greater success. So why not offer the players an option to learn uh, a valuable strategy or tip just by watching a video? Um, I think you do see hints and tips on loading pages a lot between, um, between screens and between levels of games. But why not try to monetize that spot and have the player watch a rewarded video to earn, learn something super special or learn uh, some special tip or trick? Another, um, tying this back into another place I spoke of, if a player is continuously losing a level or failing a mission, why not offer them an opportunity to teach them a quick tip uh, to pass that mission by watching a rewarded video? Uh, again, I think these are strategies that will help keep the player more pleased to play your game and keep them engaged as well. The last uh, of the 10 locations I wanted to talk about was a discount um, price on IAP, or I have a typo there, sorry about that, discount price on IAP or item bundle. So the ultimate goal of every free-to-play game and developer is to uh, have the people enjoy the, the game enough that they're going to spend money through in-app purchases. Offer a rewarded video to discount an early game IAP or bundled offer. I think we've all seen um, you know, early game offers for $4.99 for a coin pack and an item that you might need for a game. But why not have an opportunity to bump that down to $2.99 if they watch a video? Good chance that, well, obviously they're going to watch the video and then there's a good chance that they might convert into becoming a player or a payer. And then one-time payers also often become multiple-time payers. 
So that's a, a, a good way, monetize them through the video, hopefully monetize them through the in-app purchase, and then continuing to monetize them throughout the lifetime of the game. Um, yeah, so you will also monetize the players of video, through videos, and as I said, once a player spends once, they're more likely to spend again. This is one I haven't really seen in games yet, and I just think it would be a really good uh, idea to pop it in there. So let's see. Uh, my main takeaways then here, um, the big one I wanted to highlight at the beginning was to train players to interact with video in your tutorial of your game. I see that uh, in some games, but not enough games these days. But yeah, if you want people to really engage with the video, show them where it is while you're working your way through the tutorial. And I believe that they'll continue to engage that with that video as they're playing your game. Placements, placements, placements. So uh, a lot of folks just have the one IAP store placement in their game. You need multiple placements in your game that make sense to continue to try to monetize people as much as possible through video. Um, similarly to that, more than just the IAP store. So keep thinking about creative placements that aren't hidden away in a store, put them on the main menu, build them into the core loop, and you're gonna get higher engagement with your rewarded video. Um, fourth, variety of meaningful rewards. Again, be creative with what you're rewarding, items, currency, timers decreasing, things like that. But think creatively about your game, what players really want and need, and how to get them to interact with the video in order to uh, achieve those things. Um, as I highlighted in one slide, rewarded video can lead to player IAP spend. So the more you are able to integrate rewarded video creatively and effectively in your game, the more uh, I believe the players will stick around and the more likely you are to get them to uh, spend money on IAP. Also, if they're showing the value of hard or soft currency through a rewarded video uh, and they don't want to wait to either watch another video or earn that currency, maybe they'll jump the gun and spend money on that currency in your game as well. And then lastly, this one I didn't really highlight, but I did want to put it as a key takeaway from the presentation here, is uh, use segmentation to find a way to uh, show other ads to players who don't even re react with your rewarded video ads. I think a lot of players who don't spend and don't re react with your rewarded video ads, how are you ever going to monetize that player? So find a way to show them other creative ads and, uh, and monetize that player that way.